Hey guys, what's going on today? I wanna to share with you my five current favorite Final Cut plugins. Ones I've been reaching for to really elevate the looks of the videos I create for my clients. I'm gonna have links to all of these below. I'm gonna do a quick demo on each of them for you today and let's just dive right into it. All right, the first one is called M Puppet. This is from Motion VFX and this lets you animate any still characters to make them look like they're moving. So M Puppet is actually located with your generators under your generators tab over here. And here we go. We're just going to drag this down. So when we select the clip in the timeline, go on over to the generator button in your inspector window and you're going to need to drop in your character into the drop zone. So what you want to do now is add handles. It's basically you're adding joints to your character. So for a shape like this, where it's like a human form, you know, you'd want to add handles at the elbows, at the wrist, at the knees, waist, ankles, neck. So I'm just going to do that real quick. You just click. So I've got my handles here and then I want to add a mesh and make sure my entire person is selected. And then I'm going to click this down arrow to open up my handles. And this is where I'm going to add the keyframes to make my character move. So I'm just going to add these keyframes. So I'm going to start him out in his natural position. And then I'm going to drag my playhead down a little bit further in my timeline. And then when I start moving these handles, it'll create keyframes automatically, which is great. It's really fast. Just want to start moving your guy here. a little bit further in my timeline. Now you just saw me in a few seconds make this character like jump in the air and land. I mean, it's a pretty basic move, but with more time and if you had something very specific you needed this character to do, you could easily achieve it with M Puppet. Um, it's especially great if you have a client that has like a character in their logo and you can actually animate that character and their logo and it really definitely wows them. But what I really love about M Puppet is that you can use it to add life to still images as well. Take a look at these samples from Motion VFX. And then you can see this one here I created on my own because sometimes clients will ask me to add a still photograph in the middle of a video. And I don't love doing that because I feel like it just kind of is such a weak, weak spot in the video. Like everything else is moving and everything's happening. And then all of a sudden you've got this still image and I don't love that unless it's in some sort of context. But now I don't mind it as much because I can make that still image really cool and really affected and give it some wow factor. So it goes from being like the weakest point in the video to one of the strongest points in the video. So I love M Puppet. It solves a lot of problems for me as a professional producer and video editor. So this one definitely gets the big thumbs up. My next favorite plugin is called Trans Freeze from Pixel Film Studios. This is a transition plugin and it's definitely different from the transitions we've been seeing lately where it's a lot of like blur wipes and you know high movement transitions. This one's different in that you're custom cutting out an element in your video and using it to create that transition. It's a really neat effect. It's a lot of steps to get it done, but the impact is definitely worth it if you have the time and the right shots. In my opinion, in. This transition is most successful on a tighter shot um, or a medium shot where you have a very specific focal point in your shot. Let me just show you real quick how to do it. I'm just going to drop this clip at the beginning of my timeline. We're actually going to transition from this shot to this shot. So what I need to do is select the clip I want to apply the effect to and I'm going to cue up my playhead toward the end of the clip and I'm going to create some hold frames. So to do that, I'm going to hit Shift and H. And there you go, I've got some hold frames here and I just need to clean it up. I'm gonna get rid of this excess and then I wanna shorten the duration of the hold frame. So it's much shorter, like you would have a transition B. And then what we wanna do is head on over to our generators and find Trans Freeze from Pixel Film Studios. And then let's pick 
one of these transitions out. And what I'm going to do is drag this one horizontal wipe out and place it over my clip and trim the length. So it's the same length as my hold frames. And then we want to select the generator in the timeline and head on over to the inspector window. And what we want to do is mask off our image, which in this case is this woman smoking a cigar. So what I want to do is clear all the data of the default mask shape here. And then just start clicking away to cut her out. All right, next step, we're gonna select our clip and create a compound clip out of it. So I'm gonna hit option G and I'm gonna call it Mac Smoking. Then I'm gonna select the generator in my primary storyline. I'm going to hit Apple X to cut it. I'm going to open up this compound clip and I'm gonna hit option B to paste it back at the end of my clip. And there we go. Okay, let's move on to our third favorite plugin. This one is called Slice Pop. It is by Stupid Raisins. Of course, I'll link to it below. And it includes really easy to use split screen templates that can show up a lot of shots in just one frame. This one solves the problem that, I don't know if you guys have, but it's a problem I always have, which is that I shoot too much great B-roll and then the length of my client ordered video is too short to incorporate all the shots I wanna incorporate. So I love using split screens to show everything that I shot. Let me show you how easy it is to use because it is a breeze. So Slice Pop is located in your effects bin and you can see here we can browse so many different configurations and you can choose just based on how you, whether or not you like the layout or how many shots you're trying to incorporate. You can incorporate up to 10 screens here on Slice Pop. That is a lot of shots. I'm gonna go with three shots and let's do this trapezoid down three. Let's use this effect and this layout here. So in order to use this, it's, they make it so easy, you guys. All you do is drag the effect onto your clip. Let's choose this, this cell phone clip here. And then you wanna add the other shots you would like to utilize within this split screen on top of this other first shot here. So let's pick this one of these books. And let's also pick this gentleman reading. And again, I'm going to drag the same effects on over to these two clips here. So now I just need to tell Slice Pop where in the split screen I want each shot to lay. They make this so easy, I can't even tell you. It's literally a click of a button. What you wanna do is select your clip. And right now the default is that it's in zone selection one. I'm gonna move him over to three and I'm going to move these, leave these books here in zone selection one. And then I'm gonna move this cell phone shot, which you can't see yet, into the center. Now, if I wanna modify the position of my shot so I can see the cell phone centered in the screen, I just you know grab these tools and I can scale up, scale down and I can make changes that way. Now, the other thing that Slice Pop does is it has options to build in and build out. Now you can turn this off by checking or unchecking these boxes and you wanna make sure that you check them all on or all off for all three shots. Let me show you what it looks like to build in over another shot. You can just drag these to different shots. It doesn't matter what order you put them in because you already told Slice Pop where in the split screen you want them to be. And they build out. There's so many other effects you can do here. You can add duotone color effects and you can pick, you know, literally, of course, any color of the rainbow. You can change the color of the lines. 
And you can change the width of the lines as well. You can add drop shadows to make the split screens look a little bit more three-dimensional. Do you see that? And you can control like the opacity and the blur and the distance and the angle. I love the functionality of Slice Pop. It is so easy to use. You have so much control over the layout of your shots and there's so many different configurations. Sometimes I'll have things build in, but then just cut out. So I turn off that build out effect. Sometimes I have them do both. Sometimes I don't have them build in at all. Sometimes I have no lines dividing. Sometimes I have thick lines dividing my shots. I mean, it's really, it's really a useful tool. And like I said, it's super easy to use. So this one for me, Slice Pop, Stupid Raisins, good job on this one. My next favorite plugin is called Focus Point by King Luma. You can find this at fxfactory.com. Of course, I'll link to it right below. And it's basically mimics a tilt shift lens. A tilt shift lens is a very specialized lens that gives really shallow depth of field to very wide shots. And it kind of has this effect of making things look really miniature. It's a really interesting effect that's been around for a while, but I kind of got back into it because I watched The Undoing on HBO. Did anybody else watch The Undoing? And in the establishing shots between scenes, they often used this effect. I don't know if they use this exact plugin, but it's the same effect. And it kind of like made me think, oh yeah, remember Tilt Shift? I kind of missed that look. You can find King Luma Focus Point right here in your effects window and you can just drag and drop the effect of course and then what you get are these handles here that let you control where the focal point of your shot is and then within the inspector window there is so much control over how the blur effect looks how narrow the focal point is um, there's so much more you can do in here. There are color effects that you can apply. You can keyframe the positions so you could follow, let's say, a car or something like that. And that is the effect. Now, you may be wondering, how is this different from the focus effect that comes with Final Cut? And I just want to show you the difference because at first glance, you think, why do I need to pay for this plugin? I have something that does something similar, but let me just show you the difference really quick. So here is the exact same shot, and I'm gonna go on over to blur, and I'm gonna drop in that focus effect. And so at first glance, yeah, we're doing the same thing, right? It looks so similar. But if you look over here in the inspector, there is so little control with this focus effect. You can change the width of it, right? So I'm making it very narrow or very wide. You can change the height. So I'm again, making it very narrow or very wide. I can change the position. I can change the softness, the amount of the blur. Okay, yeah, there's some control in here, but compare the inspector window to focus point. Look at how many different options you have, how much more control. And look here in the bin, there's actually three different options here. So right now in this current shot, we've got the one focus point, but if we go on over to, let's say this shot, I've added two focus points, you see this? So I've blurred here and there, and I have so much more control over the angles. So I definitely think this is way better than the focus filter that comes with Final Cut. Let me show you one more use of this filter. I'm gonna drop this radial focus onto this playground shot and I'm going to put the emphasis here on these kids. And so it really makes the playground look miniature as if you're zoomed in so tight on it that only a small portion of the shot can be in focus, like you're shooting it from space or something. That is the effect of focal point. It's definitely kind of a fun look, a little bit surreal, but it gives your establishing shots or your wide shots, drone shots, like a little something extra. So I'm back into this one a lot. All right, my last favorite plugin is one that has saved me 
so many times, so much time when I'm working on client projects. And it is the mega title pack from Pixel Film Studios. This title pack is insane. It has a lot of individual title packs that you can buy from Pixel Film Studios, but they bundled it in an amazing price. And you can make full screen graphic titles that animate in and animate out. And there's so much customizability with this mega pack. It is a value and I rely on it all the time. I'm just going to drop some B-roll shots into my timeline here because a lot of these titles work as overlays. If you go into your titles and generators tab, everything from here to here comes with this title mega pack and there are looks for everything. So I'm going to select this one here. It's called Maverick in the hipster volume three. And I'm going to drop it over my shot. And you can see this graphic has transparency in the background. So you can still see the B-roll shot underneath. But guess what, you guys? I can make so many modifications to this. Let's just select that generator, head on over to the inspector window. And there are so many changes I could make. Obviously, I can change the scale of the graphic and the position. I can modify the text obviously, and I can even like eliminate text. So I don't need, let's say this. I can change the color of these elements. On this particular one, I can add a logo using a drop zone. And then if I wanna change the fonts, I, all I have to do is click edit mode here and then show the text inspector here at the top. And then I just change my fonts as you're used to doing in Final Cut. What I love about these generators is that they build in and build out. They're incredibly customizable. You can change the fonts, the colors, the scale of things, how things animate on. You can have them be just totally transparent, supered over your video, or you can have the backgrounds be full screen. So they're a standalone full screen graphic. And there are so many templates in here. It's bonkers. I've been using this a ton and I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface of the amount of templates in here. So for me, the mega title pack from Pixel Film Studios, it has been like, I don't know, a huge lifesaver. I would definitely encourage you to check it out. It is an awesome, awesome value. So you guys tell me, did you like any of these plugins? Uh, do you have favorites that you think I should check out? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again.